Welcome to another show, Mile End. Our, our, our next guest is uh, a, really a kind of a local face and celebrity, someone you you know and maybe you wondered a little bit about, so we decided to ask him on the show. Matt Silver. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, thank, thank you, you for being it's here. It's very exciting. You thank guys you got a great, here. great thing going on here. Thank you. Thank you. Do you get the idea? Uh, I think so. There's a desk and there's a couch. That's it. That's all we have. I think that's all you need. I noticed you're smoking Export A Greens. My, this is what my father smoked. It's that, a working man's cigarette. I know. When, we, when I was growing up, we called them trucker cigarettes. Green Death. Green Death. Yeah, yeah, the Green Death. Well, they've written folk songs about these cigarettes. Really? That's a fact. Les Colocs wrote, wrote a song uh, called Le Dragon Vert, which are about Export A Greens. Really? Yeah, absolutely. I, when, we, when I was growing up, we smoked Export A Blues. Uh, well, you grew up in Rosemere. I grew up in Rosemere, which I was a Rosemere cigarette. Was the Export A Blue <laughs> or Du Maurier? It was one of those. And I had one friend who, like, has since gone on to disappear into the wilderness. He was the only guy I knew who smoked Export A Greens. There's very few of us. The only uh, other guy I know that smokes these cigarettes is Jean Leloup, and he smokes okay. blue. And hey, do, oh, he smoke, He doesn't even smoke green. Doesn't he? Can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> John Lou is a great sight, isn't he? In the city, he's uh, he he's local. He's local. we want wanted to have him on the show, but but it was complicated. He's always in the midst of like explaining something to a beautiful young woman, as we should. Like when he's walking around, he's got like the top hat, and he's like always very, like passionately explaining something to somebody to a beautiful young woman as he's walking down the street. Oh yeah, he won't talk to us. No. Oh god. No. No, he's like a shaman. He's like a Quebecois <laughs> shaman. Speaking of shamans, yes, you I, first time I ever saw you working at um, Cinema du Parc years ago. I didn't talk to you then, but I just I remember you got that face. You got that Christopher Reeve look. The Christopher Reeve which, look. I I love it. You could be a stand-in well, now I'll, that he's uh, you know dead. I'll tell you something. I used to work at the United Parcel Service UPS. Some, huh? Yeah, in Lachine, and uh, I was like a loader. I loaded in. And like I was an Anglo, and there were a bunch of francophones, but they always used to call me Superman because like I look like Chris because of that like Clark Kent thing. I get it. I, what a I get great it. look! It's a very unique look. I'm not complaining. I'm not Listen, complaining. When they cast Christopher Reeve, they one of the reasons they cast him is because he was so they felt like he was a kind of an Elvis look, like no okay. one else looked like him, yeah. and kind of like to separate Superman from everyone else. Right? Yeah, yeah. Fair you enough. Know? He has a great head of hair. Um, he, does, he did have a great head so of hair. I, well, so I was working at UPS, and they, that was like the joke. They all called me Superman, and that was it. Like They called the Anglo kid Superman. And then one day, I pulled my back loading a truck like really badly. I couldn't get up. Like I was sort of like stuck in this like an L-shaped 90-degree position. <laughs> could not get up. And they had to take me away on this like uh, on a cart that they use for like giant parcels. A makeshift gurney. A kind of a makeshift gurney, and they drove me past all the other trucks where all the other loaders were working, and it was just people being like, "Go, Superman!" That is the most humiliating. It was really humiliating when you like seriously injure yourself at the United Parcel Service, and a bunch of francophones scream at you from like uh, the loading, from like the loading belts. And yet you've gone on to much bigger things than then. Uh, you KK Downey. Yep. A few that. years ago, but it was yep. a great. It was like the Fubu of. Ooh. Of, of Maya Land Films, For Us, By Us. That was For Us, By Us. <laughs> That's a good tie-in. Yeah. It's, yeah it was the I have boom nowhere boom. to go with that segue, It was actually. the urban clothing label for f hipster filmmaking. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 um, and I, well, you always loved film. You were always a big film guy. And, and, and I remember at, at a party, that it was the first time I had kind of seen you and talked to you. And you were talking about, at the time, Star Wars had just come out. The new mm -hmm. ones, the awful ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Sith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That garbage had come out, and you had a great spiel. You t you said that something about George Lucas castrating an entire generation. Yeah, tell well, us about that. I, I thought it was fascinating. My theory was is that we, as a generation of boys, I mean, say boys in a general way, because there were a lot of women who loved Star Wars. Absolutely. But demographically speaking, it was a boys movement. We had grown up with so many disappointments, you know, broken homes and like realizing that the world wasn't going to be what we thought it was going to be. And the one thing that we had to live for. No more space either. Like the space program was this kind of well, we fiction just grew almost. Up in a very tumultuous time and we sort of like. Yeah, the 80s. Oh, we wow. saw a lot of people. We saw like the failure of like the generation before. So we were so focused on episode one, two, and three as being this great, like a. Coming to like Jesus rising kind of thing. I thought you know? it would like, save my life. I thought it was going to save my life. I really did. I thought it was going to be <laughs> yeah. the most important thing. Yeah. It was going to answer so many questions for me. 
and we went to go see it. And you know, I was young when it came out. I was like 18, I guess, when yeah. the first one came out. Really? Yeah, 18 or 19. And I kind of fooled myself, like a cult member tricked myself into thinking that it was okay. And I bet you almost liked it. You kind of left I there and you're like, liked it. and you're like, oh, well maybe Jar Jar will grow on me, right? Maybe, maybe there's a, maybe there's a wisdom beyond my knowledge here. Maybe there's something going on. Maybe George Lucas has a, has a grand plan here, a grand design. And, but? Absolutely not. And so it proved <laughs> to a generation. No plan. No plan, no nothing. He made three pieces of garbage for like, Children and uh, the mentally ill. The, the, I would say the, like the sick. The sick. He made three <laughs> movies, which and it proved to a generation of boys and the girls who were involved in the Star Wars uh, world that there is no truth or goodness in the universe. That yeah. essentially the Sith in the star in the model of the universe that George Lucas presents, the Sith is actually the truth, and Jedi's are just a. Uh, Passing fad. And, and there was this Aryan connection almost, like you had to be born a Jedi. Yeah. Which was new, which we didn't have very in the first three. Very Nazi, very, very disturbing. Very Nazi. Yeah, very Nazi. The idea that you would be like a, bi like it would be a biology thing, it's just quite disturbing. No, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It made me sick. What would you tell him right now if he was here? I would say that I am extremely disappointed. And um, I, 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 would, I would just ask, to please let somebody else get those movies and redirect them. He would just take a hundred dollar bill, stuff it in your mouth. He probably would, and That's I would take it. Would I would take the hundred dollars. You would take the hundred dollars. Yeah, I would totally take it. Well, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 hard, right? In the neighborhood, it's hard to make a buck. It's in this neighborhood, yeah, or just in the global neighborhood. Ooh, we'll get back to that. Actually, we're <laughs> gonna take a break, and we're gonna come back to the global neighborhood with Matt Silver. Be right back. I've been talking about since I was eight years old. Wanting to have a bigger penis? Not that. <laughs> Mild bestiality, giving and receiving of facials, giving and receiving of pearl necklaces, Dutch door, Dutch oven, windmill, pinball, pin cushion. It's from Jean Patrick Beauchemin. He's this Haitian retard. It's amazing. author has to be a product. It has to be something that I can sell to the public. I spent three years on that novel. Sometimes you need to learn to give up. Our band sucks and nobody will publish your book. We're exactly what the art community hates. Name me an artist, just one, who has had as much influence on our generation as Dylan had on his. Well, how would we do it? Let's create KK Downey. Huxtable residents, they, they want to talk to KK. And what's your favorite color? Blue. And we're back with Matt Silver. Matt, do you mind if I smoke? We smoke on the show. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. That's fine. I'm a, I, you, I was, a, I was a smoker. I am a struggling, quitting smoker. It's a tough racket, man. It's the worst. It is the absolute worst. Have you ever tried the patch? No, I haven't tried any kind of nicotine replacement <sighs> thing. Just it's intense. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've heard. My mother tried the patch, and she, it gave her like nightmares and all that stuff. Vivid. Yeah. Lucid nightmares. Yeah. In my nightmares. For three weeks, the first three weeks I had vivid, lucid nightmares, and every single person I've ever known and loved came to the dream and told me how much they did not love me. Really? 
That was my nightmare. <laughs> textbook nightmare. Like no, no like, monsters. Like Freud, no monsters. Just pretty girls saying, "You're I don't love you." If you told that to Sigmund Freud, he would be he would he would be he'd be angry at you for wasting his time. Why? Like that was Why like was such that? textbook. Such a nightmare. <laughs> that is like he didn't care about love. He was well, just the idea of like everybody that you love coming and telling you that they don't love you. That's like a fundamental human fear. Oof. Well, he did a lot of cocaine enough to kill a small horse, really. I don't, I don't really respect Different time. Different time. Yeah, it's over. But I want to know who who actually quit smoking. Who does it? You don't quit smoking. You pause. Yeah, I think I honestly, pause. I know people who have quit for 10 years. Still think about it. Still think about it. They, they still crack. They go oh. and they, they start smoking again. A couple they, glasses of wine. They smoke in the bathroom. Ugh, it's crazy. They smoke in the shower. It's the worst thing. I, it's the stupidest thing I've ever done in a lifetime of stupid things. Starting to smoke when I was a teenager was the stupidest thing I ever did. Well, it's good that, that you thought it's so expensive. It's extremely expensive. It's extremely expensive. And then, I mean, now with like, I mean, and, and you know, I mean, you're not a, you know, you still make films, you have comedy uh, specials that come out of Christmas and yep, stuff. Yep. But you're also uh, managing at Sparrow. A, yeah. A, a wonderful bar, which you all know and love. Local, wonderful bar. Great hangout. Vanessa voted top waitress in the city by the mirror. The best waitress I've ever, just, just amazing. Just waitress. hard working. Vanessa Vick, great. Waitressing. <laughs> Top notch. Top notch. Yeah, Sprouts a great place. I love it. It's uh, some friends of mine opened it up a couple years ago, and I've been involved with it since it opened, different capacities um, in the last couple years. But right now, I am the manager on the weekend, one of two managers on the weekend, and we do the front of house. But it's just an amazing place. It's like, it's, it's Montreal's Cheers. You get to go, you know, you'll see good people there, there's good music. My favorite thing is we got voted for, in this last Best of Montreal, we got voted for like ritziest place or something, or fanciest Ritzy. place. Yeah, we were in like the top 10. Of like a Ritz fancy dive. Fancy dive. Well, not even dive, like just like high end. We were on like the same level as like Velvet and like, um, you know, very the, fancy. The like cocaine a, parlors. The, yes, the like cocaine the <laughs> parlors. That's, yeah, that's another word. That's an euphemism. <laughs> but we at Sparrow, what's amazing is we have these great DJs who come in on every night of the week and they get to play anything they want so at the on the one hand we're like thought of as this ritzy bar but on the other hand on a friday night you can go and listen to like dead boys or you know fear or like just old hardcore from like new york and san francisco and all that well, you stuff. used to dj i always loved your sets at the green room i did dj yeah for yeah. a long time yeah. yeah and and now at uh, just you know i mean you're in the nightlife do you, like, do the hipsters have money? Do you think they're spending as much? They have more money than they did when we were young hipsters. You think so? Because I think so. I, I, I wonder if they're feeling the collapse as well. You know, I think if you are an illustrator or graphic designer <laughs> in the 21st century, or a photographer, or like any of those things, you really are coming into a renaissance. Oh. Like, you, I think you are able to make a lot of money because people like me, who don't really have any practical skills, Oh, Beyond, God, no. Just, no, I have no practical skills. Um, I wouldn't know the first thing. And the whole world is about like graphic design and photography and illustration and all that stuff at the moment. Well, some would say finance and, you know, True. real estate. I don't know any, <laughs> I don't know that many hipsters in finance and real estate. Um, are you in love? Yeah, that's a heavy duty question. You really dropped the bomb there. I'm... That was really, I did not Zip. see that, I didn't see that one coming. Uh, am I in love? Yeah, yeah sure. And yeah. um, where is she? she My, in she's in Philadelphia. She lives long in distance. Long distance. Yeah, I lived in Philadelphia last year. Um, in love, distances can easily be bridged. They can be bridged. Easily be bridged. Okay. And this is the city of brotherly love. That Philadelphia. It sure is. There's a lot of love to go. When's around. the last time you kissed her? Three weeks ago. Oh, three weeks ago. Totally three reasonable. Weeks? Totally reasonable. Totally reasonable. Absolutely Frequent reasonable. Frequent flyer trains. What do train. You do? I do the train. Amtrak. You go there, or she comes here. It, we take turns. So okay. I go like I go maybe once every month and a half. She comes here once. We cover on like a rotation. Are you doing a whole Bill Clinton Monica thing with uh, like the phone sex? Or? With the phone sex. Are I we... feel like I can ask you that. Yeah. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm happy you feel like you can ask me that. <laughs> I would 
it's a, this is great. When this goes up on air, hey, everybody, hey, city of Montreal, don't be afraid to ask me about whether I have phone sex with my girlfriend. I've had phone sex. Well, there was no shame. People have had phone sex. I'm just, I just don't want to be walking down the sto- walk down and Park know. Avenue and, and people are like, that's the guy who jerks off in front of his computer while he's talking to his girlfriend. Well, my friend, distance is not for the fearful. You're a bold man. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, thanks a lot for coming on the show. It was my pleasure. Congratulations. I really appreciate it. Come back again. I mean, we won't be, we won't have a second season. No one will watch this, but still. <laughs> if, if, <laughs> Come on. What, what about the guy who's watching this right now? The, what, the in camera the future. guys? And the, what about these guys? The ca- they're drunks. Let me tell you something. We're going into a long, cold winter. To have something like this, you can edit together, you focus on going into... Do you into feel like, the people trying to hook up yeah. for the fall? I feel like people are... A, feel- a friend of mine told me a story that she went to the SAQ one day full rack of Jameson, like the little bottles. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like full, totally stocked rack of Jamesons. The next day, this was like last week, the next day, empty. Totally empty. And one night, the sadness. The, sadness reigns. <laughs> sadness <laughs> reigns over the Mile End Just for a six lot of, months. Well, we love melancholy because it's dramatic. It's here. quite dramatic. We want to be sad. We want to be sad. Yeah. yeah. All, All right. right. There. That, I think this is really what, this is really the sentiment for the winter it's what I in Montreal, this is it. <laughs> this is a good. This is a good sentiment. Matt, thanks a lot for being on the My show. My pleasure. Thank a you real for pleasure. Me. Thank you for having me. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much.